everyone. I'm Hiroshi, and I'm reaching out to you with another unique conversation. And today we have with us someone really extraordinary. He is a very talented actor, independent filmmaker. He's a singer. He does a lot of amazing things. And we wanted to actually, you know, have the privilege of bring him on board physically, but currently he's residing in the States. So we thought of, you know, zooming it out. So he's also the creative force behind uh, the best uh, comedy feature at the Burbank International Film Festival for The Billionaire. Gihan Kure, thank you so much for joining you with us. <laughs> the pleasure all mine. I, uh, no better face to see first thing in the morning than you. Oh, that's so sweet of you. And first of all, congratulations on your amazing achievement. So uh, let's just straight up dive into this. How did you feel? Let's talk a little bit about the team behind this and the overall experience. Absolutely. Oh, you mean how did I feel when, when I won the award? Yes. Uh, you, you know, Hiroshi, I mean, very rarely does someone win on, like for the very first feature. So I, I thought just being a nominee was, you know, an honor enough. Uh, so, I mean, honestly, for me, it was like, I, I could feel the hand of God when they announced, you know, the billionaire. Uh, I was like, this is all <laughs> the grace of God. <laughs> And, and let's, let's talk a little bit about um, your team behind it, you know, how, what kind of challenges did you face? I mean, something, you know, for a masterpiece to just come out, I mean, I'm sure you had to overcome different kinds of challenges. Let's talk a little bit about all of that. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, first of all, we had to, because I adapted the script from a George Bernard Shaw play from the 1930s and so we reached out to the Royal Society of Authors in London who kind of, uh, you know, they're in charge of Shaw's uh, plays and his, you know, uh, uh, kind of literary body of work. And, uh, you know, so I wasn't even sure if they would let me because essentially I took one of his plays, I changed the gender, I kind of adapted it, adapted it modernized it. So, uh, you know, but they were very, very nice. I mean, they said, absolutely, go ahead. Uh, I mean, once I paid the royalties and everything, uh, you know, uh, because, you know, when it's a classic play like that, it's, uh, um, I mean, some estates can be a little protective of these, uh, you know, deceased playwrights work, yeah. Um, and kind of my inspiration was uh, My Fair Lady, because that was also one of Bernard Shaw's plays, which they turned into, my Fair Lady, you know, they took uh, Pygmalion and turned it into My Fair Lady, and that was one of my favorite films growing up, uh, you know, Audrey Hepburn, Rex Harrison, so okay. I kind of, absolutely, I mean, I, I just wanted to bring that classic Hollywood sensibility into uh, 2020, and, uh, you know, so the, the film is very old-fashioned, uh, I mean, the acting style, the, the dialogue, everything is, you know, it's very, heightened, very formal. It's not this kind of conversational, like everyday thing you see on, you know, in most American films. Uh, and then, uh, you know, when we were auditioning the actors, I think that was uh, also, I mean, a bit of a challenge because most actors uh, are not used to uh, such uh, what I would call a high flown language, uh, you know, because Bernard Shaw, it's like, I shan't permit it. Uh, you know, Love that, that, it. I, I just yeah. went through like snippets of the trailer and I was like, wow, this gives a little bit of a, I don't know, it gives a little bit of the colonial feel, the European, it, it, it has so many sophistications just integrated and it's amazing. Thank you, Hiroshi. I, I mean, I, I'm glad you, you know, all that resonated with you because, uh, you know, when we were auditioning actors, I mean, fortunately, I live in a building where we have a little screening room downstairs. We held all the auditions there and, uh, you know, uh, and most of them are used to very contemporary, sort of fast-paced, quick cuts, like, you know, uh, I mean, most scripts nowadays, like whether it's film or TV, like a scene will be maybe a page or two, you know, it's just, uh, okay, yes. we, you know, yeah. Uh, and like, kind of like, you know, shrinking attention spans, but uh, I, so, you know, it was really a case of finding the actors who could handle reams and reams of dialogue and uh, you know, uh, and, and kind of really understand the, the 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 characters, and then I kind of had to, 
explain uh, that this was really a throwback to a different era, like you said, all, you know. Uh, and once we did that, uh, you know, I think once the cast was in place, uh, then we moved to, uh, we went to Canada because my co-producers said that, uh, you know, Canada would uh, be a better place to shoot than Los Angeles because just like different locations, uh, you know, uh, one thing I must give credit uh, to the director because, I mean, I produced it and wrote it, and but I didn't direct it. Uh, so, uh, you know, the director said, Gehan, you know what, let's, let's really open up some of the scenes because, you know, in the play, everything takes place indoors, of course. Uh, you know, so the director was like, in Canada, you have all these beautiful, you know, locations. Let's like open it up. Let's take some of the scenes kind of, you know, outside. And, uh, and, and maybe you saw a little bit in the trailer, like we had these, you know, beautiful vistas uh, with, uh, you, you know, so much. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was beautiful. Thank you. I mean, I felt like, oh, this is like, you know, the sound of music, like Julie Andrews, you know, up yeah, in the mountains. The landscapes are amazing. It just it takes you. you in there. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And also, yeah. um, you know, to really give life to an amazing production like this, it takes many stepping stones of fine tuning your craft and, you know, going on with experience. So let's backtrack a little bit and talk about your previous short films, what kind of participation they had. Let's just kind of talk a little bit about that experience. Absolutely, Hiroshi. So, yeah, I mean, when I first, uh, uh, it, it's funny. So, when, you know, I, I studied uh, drama at University of University of Southern California, and I also studied psychology. Uh, those are my two degrees. And I didn't really, like, cinema was something where I just took classes at USC because they have the best film school in the world uh, with, like, you know, George Lucas, uh, like, being one of the alumni. But honestly, Hiroshi, I never... Uh, never imagined that I would be making films. I thought I would be primarily a stage actor because that was my, you know, background. Uh, and then, you know, uh, I think around 2014, uh, you know, uh, I was, uh, I met John Favreau, the, the director, uh, you know, and, uh, and there's, a, there's a connection here because John Favreau uh, was the director of Iron Man, the first Iron Man. Uh, and at the Burbank International Film Festival, one of the hosts was the writer-director of Iron Man 3, uh, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so when I met John Favreau, I was wearing my USC sweatshirt and, uh, you know, and then he was like, oh, are you a filmmaker? Uh, you know, uh, and I was this like much skinnier guy at the time. <laughs> and. You know, uh, I kind of just wanted to say, no, Mr. Favreau, I'm, I'm an actor, I'm a singer, I'm a performer, I'm not a filmmaker, you know. Uh, but then, you know, Hiroshi, that just goes to show you how uh, someone of that stature can influence, uh, you know, even a boy from Sri Lanka like me, because uh, that got me thinking, oh, wow, I mean, if John Favreau thinks I can be a filmmaker, <laughs> you know, maybe I maybe. should... Uh, yeah, and, of course, you know? and, and you studied one of the best film schools in the world. So it is definitely like an amazing platform for you to even begin with. Absolutely, Hiroshi. But, you know, like in Sri Lanka, we're kind of uh, not pigeonholed, but it's like, this is what you studied. So this is what you do, right? Uh, oh, I think it's time for us to really question that and maybe like pull through a bit. <laughs> 100%, yeah, because my my degrees were, you know, drama and uh, psychology, not cinema, but yet, like you said, I'd had that foundation. Uh, yes. through the class. And I believe that um, studying something like psychology, understanding the human mind, it really helps you when it comes to crafting a character, you know, trying to, so definitely, I'm sure your learnings really helped you in your filmmaking. How did it actually, you know, did it resonate with what you were doing, the learnings that you uh, received in college? Did it really help you? Absolutely, Hiroshi, because, uh, you know, kind of going back to your question with, you know, I, I started with short films because, uh, you know, you have to learn to walk before you run a marathon, right? Of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, really the, the short films I made uh, 
which were, you know, very short. I mean, like 10 minutes, if that, like seven to 10 minutes. Um, and, uh, you know, those got into some film festivals like the Los Angeles uh, Film and Script Festival, the, uh, the Palm Springs International Film Festival, which is a big one here, uh, you know, uh, and uh, a couple of others. So that kind of gave me the confidence when I, I think when I saw the audience of these film festivals respond to me on the big screen, uh, you know, and uh, that kind of got me, I mean, okay, so to be very honest, it's my mother who uh, encouraged me to take the next step. And, uh, you know, around 2016, she was like, maybe you should start thinking of a feature film. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I think by then I had kind of, uh, I had the experience as a, as an actor, a performer, as well as a, uh, you know, as a filmmaker, um, to kind of dive into it. But I think what helped uh, Hiroshi was the fact that uh, I adapted the script from a play. So I was able to kind of merge my stage uh, training with my, you know, film uh, training. And of course. I, I think There's no such thing as it's not allowed to merge. And, and I, I can see a little bit of when I, when, even when I saw the trailer, I can see the essence of the stage drama, the realism, you know, being a third person spectator. I can see certain unique elements in there. Maybe that's something that came from your experience in you know, stage drama as well. Oh gosh, you're so astute. You should also move to Los Angeles and become a film <laughs> critic, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, you know. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, you have the looks to be in Hollywood. Oh, thank <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and absolutely, the like with the psychology, I think that has helped me, you know, the, the funny thing is, like, yes, characterization is one thing and working with actors, uh, you know, different temperaments uh, on, you know, the crew, because it's like you have 100 or 200, whatever it is, you know, very disparate individuals with their own idiosyncrasies. And I really felt like, you know, I, I mean, I was thrown into the frying pan in the sense that I had to negotiate and navigate through all these different, uh, you know, you have egos, you have insecurities, you have, uh, you, see, you do have arguments, right? And uh, so, you know, for example, it's, and that's where I guess the psychology comes into play, where you, you, you kind of have to, even though you're in the middle of it as, as a creative uh, Force, you also kind of to use your analogy, you have to also take a step back and be a spectator uh, while you're in it. And, uh, you know, if, if someone is uh, maybe being a little difficult, you just have to be like, okay, yes, I, I know what you're saying, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, this is where Bernard Shaw was coming from, or, you know, this is what I'm trying to accomplish, uh, you know. And uh, and also Hiroshi, honestly, the you know I mean in Hollywood it's uh, as you can imagine there's a lot of racism. Um, the, I must say, like the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and these the, the top institutions are trying their best to combat racism, uh, and you know, uh, but kind of on the ground level you you still experience it. So. Uh, you know, it's also kind of uh, realizing, you know, don't take anything personally, just believe in your own vision and keep, uh, keep going. And, uh, you know, I mean, I always carry, I, I think, like my Sri Lankan pride that, you know, I come from uh, Paradise Island, as I call it. Of course. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes it does become a privilege. I think I, the unique outlook you have, the exotic outlook you have, I don't even want to use the word exotic. I mean, I think it's super commercialized right now. So maybe the unique outlook you have actually granted you auditions for some of the most celebrated productions in the world. So let's talk a little bit about the auditioning experience because I've heard amazing things. I think we've ha had this conversation earlier when you were um, auditioning for Aladdin. So let's talk a little bit about your auditioning experience overall because I'm sure you have amazing things to tell about it. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, the, the, the stage plays and musicals I've done in Los Angeles were 
a little more straightforward because, uh, you know, my, my training and everything. So, and also, Hiroshi, uh, when you're doing a stage play, your race doesn't really matter because uh, it's, you know, that suspension of disbelief on stage. Uh, so, so, for example, yeah. Uh, I mean, I played uh, Professor Fritz Baer in Little Women, the, the, like the Broadway musical version. Uh, and, you know, he's a German in, in the story, but uh, that was fine. Uh, and uh, one of Tom Stoppard's uh, British plays uh, called Arcadia, where I played this uh, British academic, this very arrogant British professor. Uh, and again, they were like, sure, like you could, like, you know, you, there could be a, like a brown Englishman, you know? Um, yeah, uh, but on film, you know, we, we still have to cross that barrier, unfortunately. Uh, so that, that did kind of restrict the roles that I could audition for on screen because there's this notion that, oh, you have to be historically accurate and you have to, you know, so meaning we have to cast white actors or, you, you know, so, uh, but, 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 you know, so for example, Aladdin was an obvious uh, uh, choice for me to uh, audition for. I mean, when, when Disney did the, the live action Aladdin film, and, uh, you know, when, when I got that email from Disney saying, you know, Gehan Kure invited to audition, I mean, that was uh, that itself absolutely. Was, that was worth celebrating. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and, you know, I knew I probably wouldn't get it because they wanted someone with some kind of Middle Eastern background. I think the actor who got it is like part Egyptian. I think he's from Egypt, actually. Okay. Uh, and also I'm more of a classical singer and they were going in a more hip hop direction, I think, uh, you know. Um, but like, I'll never forget when I, uh, when I went to Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, uh, and Burbank is like a place, by the way, like Burbank International Film Festival, where I won for the billionaire, and now Walt Disney Studios in Burbank. And uh, I mean, I, I'll never forget when I started singing, the, the head of casting at Disney, Randy Hiller, immediately she was like making notes. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, and then it was actually, so they were casting in, here in Hollywood and also in London because the director, Guy Ritchie, is from London. Uh, and they have their own casting person in London uh, called Lucinda Sison, who also uh, cast the Wonder Woman movie. Uh, and she's the one who finally wrote to me and said, Gehan, we've decided to go in a different direction, but thank you so much. And again, I was like, oh my gosh, she didn't have to do that, you know? Uh, of course, and it's it's amazing. I mean, like like you said, it's just the fact that they're willing to give their feedback, to kind of clear out the prerequisites, and have that communication itself is just amazing. I think that's just by definition professionalism. Totally, Hiroshi. Although I will say, Disney was trying to be very politically correct, so they didn't break the bad news. It was uh, you know, listen to Sison from London with with her more straightforward British. Uh, you know, demeanor, but, but she, I mean, very, very kind, very, very sweet, of course, because in Hollywood, there's this unspoken rule, oh, we shouldn't upset anyone, we shouldn't alienate anyone, you know, let's try to keep our hands clean. Um, yes. And then just like one final example of an audition uh, is uh, the, the Morgan Freeman movie, where, um, so the thing is, Hiroshi, I don't watch most uh, like modern TV. I, I'm kind of like a classic film buff. Uh, old school. So there was old school, right. Uh, and I think so apparently there's an actor called, I think Jeremy Pivens. Uh, I forget some show that he was on. And uh, so it, for the Morgan Freeman movie, it was, uh, they wanted a South Asian, but with a Jeremy Pivens vibe. Uh, so, uh, hmm. you know, I mean, I never try to copy other people, uh, right? Um, so I went into the, to the audition and, uh, I mean, I, I really impressed the casting director, but what I realized afterwards was, you know, I have a more kind of British, uh, cadence to my speech, uh, and, uh, I think they were looking for someone with like more of like a New York vibe, uh, 
and uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I can do an American accent, but uh, but at the end of the day, I I decided, you know what, I don't have to. I mean, yes, as an actor, you're supposed to do everything, but at the same time, I think you have to be true to your your own essence, and uh, sure. you know. I, yeah, and, and like you said earlier, Hiroshi, uh, you know, to, to bring some realism uh, to the role you play by approaching it from a, you know, by, by personalizing it and not trying to act, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is why, out of curiosity, I would like to know, even in The Billionaire, how much did you resonate with the character? Did you find common grounds with the character you were playing? Did you face any sort of barriers in terms of really submerging yourself in it? What was the experience like? Did, 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 are you guys similar? Or do you like, oh, we're the same? Or did you, <laughs> what kind of personality traits were <laughs> difficult and easy to, you know, entangle yourself in? Excellent question, because, uh, so the original play is called The Millionaires. Um, you know, um, and she's a very, shall we say, very sexual character. Uh, you know, uh, one of her lines in the original play is, you may be made of sawdust, but I am made of, what, fire and blood or something like, like, like you know, uh, super. and <laughs> super, exactly. And that's something I couldn't relate to, Hiroshi, because I'm asexual. So, and you know, asexuality is something we hardly hear about, you know, uh, sure. at least in the media, right? Because I mean, a to be asexual means you're not sexually attracted to anyone. You may be romantically attracted to someone, but, but like my mind never goes to a sexual place, you know? Uh, and uh, so that's something I wanted to change in the script. Okay, let's make him asexual. And uh, so he's looking for love, but pure romantic love, not sexual passion, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I mean, we, so we kind of show how you can have a same-sex romance without sex, really. Uh, well, you know, the emotional so, intimacy that goes on. Absolutely, absolutely, where it's like, okay, like, sure, like, you, like you, you can kiss the other person, you can embrace them, you can have that, you know, kind of like, Disney romance type of uh, connection, but not what we often see in movies. Uh, I think now, even in South Asian cinema, it, it's become increasingly sexualized, right? Of course. Um, and so I think that was the main change I made. But then uh, it worked for the character because, uh, so in the original play, the millionaires is very proud and very haughty because of her wealth and her status. Uh, so what I thought here was, okay, let's make his pride and arrogance, not really arrogance, because uh, haughtiness, just, you know, that, uh, yeah. Uh, I thought, let's not only make it stem from his money and status as the billionaire, but also from how pure he is, because, you know, he's above sex and, uh, you know, kind of, uh, uh, so, like, he'll look down on people, not just because they don't have money or status, because I think that's a very flimsy characterization. Yes. But, right, but but kind of more like, oh, well, I'm purer than you are. I don't watch pornography. I'm like, you know, I'm a saint kind of thing. I would love to watch this, definitely. And uh, also talking about it, like, like I said, I I am excited to watch it and I'm sure there are so many people who would love to see this have a commercial takeoff. So what kind of plans do you have in store? How can you re how are you hoping to reach more audiences? What's the plan for the billionaire in the future? Absolutely, Hiroshi. So uh, you know, at the moment, unfortunately, Los Angeles cinemas are closed. Uh, and otherwise we were going to premiere it in September this month, actually. So now, uh, I mean, the thing is, I would like to ideally premiere it here before we premiere it in Sri Lanka. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, someone in Sri Lanka, one of the theater owners was like, oh, well, you know, nowadays everybody stream, everybody debuts <laughs> it everywhere at the same time. <laughs> you know, it's not a lead first and then Sri Lanka. Um, oh, but, <laughs> what? 
Um, but the thing is, you know, this is not really a commercial film. It's more of a, I mean, it's an independent, it's a very artistic film. It's what I would call an intellectual film. So, you know, it's, it, it's not going to have that mass commercial audience. And as a result, I think it's okay to kind of release it uh, incrementally, uh, you know, kind of like for those niche audiences. Um, and uh, so I, so hopefully by uh, January or like early next year, the latest, if I could, uh, you know, premiere it here and then, oh, and the other thing is, of course, I would want to be in Sri Lanka for the Sri Lankan premiere. Uh, so, uh, you know, and I mean, you know, so I, hopefully you'll walk the red carpet as well. I'd love to. Um, <laughs> um, and also, hopefully, once we've had a theatrical premiere, we can uh, stream it online. Uh, I mean, there are a couple of platforms I've been talking to. Uh, and, uh, you know, right. And maybe the, the maybe one last thing I should say about the film itself is, uh, yes, it, it is like a more intellectual film, not like your typical run-of-the-mill comedy. Uh, but I think a lot of people will find value in it because, uh, First of all, I mean, it's a Bernard Shaw script, so the quality of the, the language, you know, I think uh, uh, it, uh, it's like an elocution teacher's dream, you know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, all the elocution <laughs> teachers might be a niche market, just saying. <laughs> they might be my niche market in Sri Lanka for sure. Uh, and, and also, Hiroshi, the fact that as a Sri Lankan, I'm playing the title character, the billionaire, and uh, you know, representing South Asians in a very empowered manner, not in a subservient manner, which was also super important to me. And that's honestly, Hiroshi, the reason I picked this project, I was like, I'm going to show them right off the bat with my very first feature film that we have dignity and we have sophistication and class and uh, we're not just helping Caucasians tell their story, you know. I think you're taking a powerful message, a bigger message than we think. So thank you so much for putting Sri Lanka on the map and also redefining what uh, minority cultures or other emerging nations around the world, what they define. So thank you so much for portraying such unique things from your creations and all the very best with The Billionaire and many, many more projects coming your way. And make sure you keep us posted with all of that. I sure will. Thank you so much. Hirishi. Thank you so much, Gihan. Hope you have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye.